headed a couple towns over today to do a removal as a referral from a friend. And it's kind of funny when I went and looked at it. I don't I don't always go look at these like this, but it's been slow, so I've been looking at some of them. So I went over there and met with the people. It was a really young couple, early 20s, mid-20s at the latest. I looked at the job, priced it incredibly reasonable, because like I say, it works slow, and this was a referral from a good friend who lives in their neighborhood. Priced it cheap anyway, and she immediately looks at me and goes, hmm, I'm thinking, and she cut my price exactly in half. I thought she was joking, but serious as a heart attack. I was like, well, shoot. Good on you for trying, I guess, but nah. I said, well, that's, you know, that's what my price is. You change your mind, call me. I'll take care of you. So she texted me back that night. I guess she was shopping the job around. Texted me back that night and said, we're good to go. That was about a week ago. Looks like it's gonna be a pretty good size hive. Been there for a couple years that they know of. Throwing a pretty good heat signature the other day, so. Right here, you can see it's nine and a half foot ceiling. You can see it's just that far above my head. <laughs> Shouldn't be too terribly difficult. It's a big hive though. I would not at all be surprised if they tried to, to uh, exterminate and were unsuccessful, and that's why I'm here. You never know. Got its lights on in the middle of the day, but that's where they're coming in. Just feeling around, feeling the integrity of the wall. And I'm doubting at this point that I'm gonna be able to save this piece of sheetrock. Oh, there's the stud right here. Maybe so. All right. I'll... That's how you locate the stud. You jam your fingers through the wall. <laughs> there's a stud right here. If we go up in this area, I was beating on it a little bit trying to locate the stud. It feels soft up there. Could be my imagination, but it is warm. Well, you missed all that. And that, my friends, is why you set your phone on airplane mode when you're recording. Somebody called in the middle of it. I was, I got busy and wasn't thinking. I meant to cut on this side of the stud. I brought some extra frame material. That way I didn't have to try to pry this off the stud, but don't know if I'm gonna save that rock or not, but if I had cut on the inside of the stud, the chances would've been a lot better. I just took a stinger to the top of the cranium. <laughs> Orly Holmes, she tried to take my eye. I took one, I took one in the eyelid. Nose is running. That's what you call cutting it close right there. It don't look like a lot of bees, but it's a sizable a couple pieces of comb that have swarmed. Open queen cells. Might have a queen, might not. We'll find out. <laughs> I will be using that same rock. And the same screws. I'll pull those out and reuse them. Run me a mud line, glue it all together. They're building honey all the way down the bottom. They got capped honey up top. I don't see any brood. They've been probably queenless for a little bit. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> my mistake. I got up here close so I could see. I got a layer. We got brood all through this thing. She's laying it up. Just nothing capped other than this few, these few old cells that hadn't emerged yet. 
All right, good deal. So we got us a brand new queen, as you can see. See how that cell is kind of flared? Looks like somebody put a, a flare tool on the end of a hose, end of a line. That's where one has been chewed out. This one here also emerged and was not killed. This one here also emerged. So there's three queen cells all emerged. There's a difference. There's a difference in one that's that's actually emerged alive and one that's been killed and chewed out. There was at least three queens in this hive at one time. Ooh, she's a lady. Okay, with the orientation of these combs running with the wall instead of against the wall makes the job a whole lot simpler. I can take, if I wanted to, I could take these whole combs out in one, one section, but they these uh, honeycomb parts could be tied in somewhere else. This stuff here is pretty much loose hanging most of the time. So you can take all the brood comb out in one piece. So four, four full combs in this wall, counting this one. And I'm, I'm counting one behind these two because I think there's probably another one running in the corner back here, the way these two are angled out a little bit. Face, the final frontier. <laughs> Once you've been stung in the face, you, you know, except for in the beard, hair, whatever, you've been stung right around this area, you almost want to wear a hood for the rest of it because now you got alarm pheromone. Like, I got alarm pheromone here because I took my t-shirt, rubbed it real hard. No doubt that's on my skin, on my t-shirt. So I don't want to wear a hood for this whole thing, but I probably will. I'm going to, I'm going to test them for just a second. If they start coming from my face, I'm going to cover up. Oh, oh man. There's probably half a gallon up top. That's some incredible tasting honey. You got, if anybody did try to poison these bees, they'd have had a hard time doing it. You got these, this Romex that goes to that light fixture, which is behind sheathing, behind a layer of vapor barrier of some type, behind brick, and no telling where that light fixture is. It's probably not direct, but the hole is probably offset somehow. So trying to put poison in there is darn near impossible. And when they do, you can taste it in the honey, and I don't take that tastes great. And that's not just my whack eye talking. I've given them about 15 minutes to walk around front and get back on that brood. Hoping the queen will walk around. She's probably not going to, but at least this many bees I can vacuum up without having to cut comb and chase them. Still not a heavily populated hive, but certainly not hurting right now. That first piece came off easy enough. This next piece is sewn into the fabric of the sheathing. <laughs> you can see where it, kind of, where it transitions from free hanging probably out here to it dips down this whole line right here. This whole piece is attached to the sheathing. Let me get the camera where you can actually see what I'm doing. And this whole piece is attached to sheathing. This right here, pretty well free hanging attached to the sides up here. Another easy piece to remove, kinda. These these two little pieces are, are trash. It's drone comb cells anyway, so the only thing that would be in it probably right now is honey. No brood in that, other than some 
cat brood that hadn't emerged yet. She's probably isn't laying in that. I have to get up here and look. Let me put some light on the subject. You can see before I can. We got some more cat worker brood right through here. Take this up here somewhere where I can get to it quickly and easily. Catch her before she gets buried and all that. Right. I didn't think she'd walk around front, but there she is. All right. <laughs> She'd been laying for a little while. We were just about to have a population explosion on this one. So here's the point in the job where we're working around hot electrical lines. You can see I'm hesitating here a bit. What I'm doing is just checking out where everything's going, figuring out where I want my cuts to be, and making sure that with that five-in-one tool, it's not super sharp, but making sure that with that five-in-one tool, I don't go through the insulation and cut that wire. And uh, it, it would most likely just trip a breaker, but it could shock me and <laughs> worst case, start a fire, but not super likely of that. Right here, I'm, I'm 99% certain that there's only one penetration through the top plate. There's two wires there. So I'm just being careful because you never know for sure where they go until you get opened up and you can see them. Now I can see them both pretty pretty good. And uh, again, on the right-hand side, you really can't see fully where they go. So I'm just being careful cutting along the wires, shaving the comb off. Once I get it shaved away from the wire, it just, it's easy from there. Once you, once you know you're clear of the wires, everything's good, you can get back to work. area they had the fire mostly contained a couple days ago and yesterday rain came through and 
Help to extinguish it. Good thing. There's some of the aftermath. 